And congratulations on this thing finally coming out. We've been hearing rumblings about it in Hollywood for a long time. How do you feel that we're on the verge of Untold finally being shared with the world? It, it's exciting. It, it, it has. I feel like that is if, if we have like any rumors about our show, it's always that, which is like, man, this is still the same one you guys are, are working on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, still the same one. Um, but no, we are like unbelievably thrilled and excited to finally get these out. Can't wait for Tuesday for our Malice in the Palace episode to drop. It's going to be fun. I remember we first connected at Sundance for the Battered Bastards of Baseball. That's right. And then you went on and did this incredible series, Wild Wild Country, which is just so Thank fascinating. And, and then now you have this project. And honestly, it was kind of like the Great White Whale, this idea, of, oh, the Way Brothers are doing this sports thing with Netflix. And nobody really knew what it was. Everybody was fans of your previous work. But what was it about this series? What was it about this approach to having multiple stories uh, that really grabbed you and inspired you as a filmmaker. Yeah, absolutely. You kind of nailed it. You know, our first doc was on a Netflix documentary on a minor league baseball team called the Portland Mavericks that my grandfather had owned. And that was really our debut documentary and our first documentary. And then we kind of right after that jumped head first into something that was like 180 degrees in the, the different direction. You know, the Roshni's Purim story of this cult that had built this $100 million utopian city in Oregon and kind of ignited warfare out there. And then once that came out, you know, we had like a lot of options. I think like truthfully, we were probably pitched like every cult story under the sun so after a while that uh, kind of our eyes started to glaze over a bit um but sports is just like we're, we're huge fans of sports documentary we're huge sports fans ourselves um i was a very mediocre left-handed baseball pitcher that topped out at like 78 miles an hour so maybe there was some wish fulfillment on my part to to get to talk to real professional athletes and and work with them um and netflix was a great partnership like basically we started out with our marty fish documentary but ultimately just expanded it into uh five five sports documentary films this is volume one um and we wanted to kind of make a big play a big splash in sports talks and see see if we can add something to the conversation well clayton way joins the show the emmy winning producer and director part of this new series untold for netflix ben lines in for rich on the rich eisen show our super producer chris brockman has a marty fish connection yeah, it's not really? great. It's not great. Marty Fish, as you know, phenomenal golfer. In addition to being a an accomplished tennis player, played in a uh, charity tournament with Marty a, a couple years right. ago. Uh, he single handedly led us to first place, which won us a free travel bag. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> my, my, my first Marty Fish story is that uh, I was like, all right, let's meet up. And he's like, great, let's go to Katsua and Brentwood. I, he's like, I eat lunch there every day. And I, I was like, all right, maybe he's being like a little hyperbolic. But like we go in and the place isn't even open. It feels like they've like specifically opened it for him. And he gets to order the Marty Fish roll. He has his own sushi roll named after him at that Katsua. And I was pretty blown away. Uh, but he's just been an unbelievably fun guy to work with. Uh, yeah, our connection with him is like uh, weirdly our – Hi, one of our best buddies from high school is the American uh, tennis player, Sam Query, and we, we don't talk about this often, but we were uh, embarrassingly a part of the Samurai, which was Sam Query's uh, fan group. We would follow Sam around at tennis tournaments and cause a, a bunch of problems, and, and, and we uh, had a lot of ruckus. Uh, but we got to know Marty a bit there, and we're super excited to partner up with him on this one. Mac Way joins the show. I was saying before you jumped on, I had a chance to watch the mouse at the palace one. And yeah. I love documentaries that I think going into them, I know everything about it. Yeah. I remember watching it live. I know Ron Artest. I've talked to Steven yeah. Jackson about this. I'm a basketball historian. I know this. But you're able to show us different sides of these men, different sides of this story that found, I found myself just connected to it in a completely different way. What was oh, it about you. this story that obviously inspired you as a filmmaker, but what challenges were there when you knew there were guys in the audience like me who were like, wait a minute, I know everything about this already? Yeah, for sure. It's a great question. And like, ultimately, I think it came down to a couple things. One was just like our faith. It, it, it's similarly like I remember when Malice in the Palace happened. It's one of the few sports events that you can kind of share those stories about with other people about where you were and, and what you were doing when it all happened. But really, it, it started with our conversations with Jermaine O'Neal, you know, who really wanted to had, had, had wanted to do something on this for years. Um, and it's really kind of where the theme of Untold came from. And I feel like the 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 subtext to untold is it's not necessarily that these sports sports stories haven't been covered like they've been covered and, and talked about for sure but at least 
talking to Jermaine and having faith in him and Ron and Steven Jackson that they hadn't been told through like their POVs, like their perspective. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we did these as puff pieces or anything, but we definitely tried to like edit score, uh, put the audience on the journey through like their lens. And that's ultimately what I'm super proud about. I think the other thing that just drew us to this is just like the unaired footage we were able to get. Um, we, we luckily filed the Freedom of Information Act with like the Auburn Hills Police Department, and they had all these camera angles that were like fascinating and things that I had never seen on YouTube, and it was good quality. Um, and at that point, we felt like, all right, we have like some pretty awesome unaired footage that's never been seen. We have these great characters who are willing to be like raw, uncensored, vulnerable. Sometimes, like at times, they admit fault, but at times, they feel like a lot of blame got put on them as well. And we felt like, all right, we have enough magic here to go make something special. Mac Way joins the show, Untold, the new documentary series on Netflix, premieres next week, finally, after many years in the works. You hear rumblings about it in Hollywood for a long time. Oh, the Way Brothers, they're working on this cool new Untold thing. Now it's finally coming out. One of the stories centers on Caitlyn Jenner, and I would imagine it's a challenge as a filmmaker with a subject like that to put the story to bed, because I feel like she's in the news, continuing to make news every week now. Uh, what was it about her story that you really wanted to kind of shine a light on because there's obviously so much there when you're talking about Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about Caitlyn is, like, she's one of the few, you know, I iconic celebrities, I think, in our country where different generations have so many different... I don't know if um, opinions is the right word, but just different, like uh, a different contextualization for her, you know, like uh, for someone like my father or my mother, like they remember Caitlin at, you know, 1976 Montreal Games, you know, destroying the decathlon over 48 hours, breaking the world record, winning gold. And then I think for like our generation, like honestly, like it was more of a keeping up with the Kardashians, like reality TV star. Like I, I think I had some understanding of what she accomplished at the games, but didn't really have a full you know idea of what that story was and then similarly to malice i mean it, it's not the most exciting answer in the world but ultimately like we went to the ioc the olympic committee and they just had like 30 hours of like this pristine 16 millimeter film following jenner around at the games um we approached caitlin and talked to her and she kind of expressed you know a similar thing to what i had talked about which is like hey, hey, for for the idea for her to go back and talk about the blood sweat and tears and her athletic performance and what she did to win gold uh, with our footage felt like you know man this is a this is a great opportunity to kind of almost recontextualize one of the most famous people in our country's origin story so to speak Mac Wade joins the show. The series is Untold. Ben Lyons in for Rich on The Rich Eisen Show. One of the five that are coming out in this first bundle you had a chance to direct, uh, along with we Chapman, did. called Crime and Penalties. Tell me about this one. This one is, this is one of our favorites. It's, I, I say it with a smile on my face and a giggle in my voice because tonally it's different. It's, it's, I, I think it's probably the most like, comical documentary we've ever made, which it can be tough to, to, to pull those off. Um, but it's essentially about a man named Jimmy Galante, who was a, a huge waste hauling figure on, on the East Coast. Rumors a, a, abound that uh, Tony Soprano was based off of him. Uh, and he has this son named AJ, similar to the show. Um, um, and AJ was this high school obsessed hockey player. And in the last game of his high school career, he rips his knee, uh, tears his ACL, and can never play hockey again. And so what does Jimmy, his father, do? Uh, he buys him a minor league hockey team in the United Hockey League. Of course, they're called the Danbury Trashers because of Jimmy's waste hauling business. Um, and he instills his 17-year-old son, AJ, as the president and general manager. And it's usually at that point that I like to say, and madness ensues. <laughs> they were the, they were the self-titled bad boys of hockey. They basically stacked their team with bruisers and bullies and enforcers, and they just uh, violently beat up on teams and won games. And it, I don't want to give away the ending of the doc too much, but the federal government comes in, gets involved, and ultimately the team is disbanded by the federal government, which I don't think has happened too often in professional sports. So uh, for us, it was just too good of a story. And, and these characters and guys were just too, too, fun to, uh, too, too much fun not to work with. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.